Hello, Okani Road families. Um, you may have heard from your students that we've had some assemblies at the end of last week talking about the expectations for students using their school Chromebooks at School for Learning. And we thought that would be really helpful for families to see the same presentation that we did with the kids so that one, you would know exactly what we talked about with the, with the students, and two, um, you might want to be able to use the same language when you're talking to kids at home. And so I thought I'd do a, a quick video just running through the presentation, giving you an idea of what we talked about with the kids and what the kids actually saw in the presentation. And that way, um, you know, we could work together school and families when we're talking about Chromebook ex expectations for school. So what we did was we, we got um, second, third, fourth, and fifth grades together, and we did one grade level at a time. So we brought like the second grade down to the cafeteria with their Chromebooks. And I ran through this presentation with them and their teachers and their teachers helped them. And um, we talked about really three very simple things they should think about when they're using their Chromebooks for learning at school. One of the things that we do at school is we try and tell kids what to do, what the expectation is, rather than trying to list the 47 things not to do, because then there's always going to be another thing not to do. And we'd much rather kids think about what they should be doing than worrying about all the things that they shouldn't be doing. So here's the presentation. So we talked about three Chromebook rules for school. And so I'm going to, um, what we said to the kids was before using your school Chromebook for learning, because these Chromebooks, they are really just for learning. They're not the kids personal devices. It's not like their tablet or their phone or their Nintendo switch or PS five that they might have at home. If they have those things at home, the way that they use those devices at home, that's up to families to talk about together. That's not for the school, but the school Chromebook is provided by the school to the students just for learning. So it's not the same as their personal device and they can't use it the same. So we wanted kids to really think about, okay, these are the three things that I should sort of take into account and think of my brain before I use my school Chromebook. And so the first one is probably the trickiest one for kids. Um, is what I'm going to do, is this something that's going to help my learning? And because really the school Chromebooks are just for learning, they're not for playing games, they're not for doing things that kids might do on their home devices, like some of the older kids um, we've seen have been looking for sneakers, right? They're, they're researching sneakers they might wanna have online. While there's nothing wrong with that, that's not really a good use of learning time. And so this is the very first thing we wanted kids to think about. And so we shared some examples with them that we've noticed kids doing, even some second graders doing. So one of the things that kids um, we've noticed doing is some kids are spending a lot of time searching for like cool backgrounds and wallpapers to customize the school Chromebook. So to make their desktop or the background of the tabs, something that they like. So here's an example that we put of a student just searching for cool Star Wars backgrounds. Now there's, we, I picked this on purpose because there's nothing bad in these pictures. Um, you know, there are no bad words, there's no profanity or anything like that. However, we wanted kids to think about, does searching for cool backgrounds help my learning in any way? And the kids really understood that it doesn't. It might be fun, but it's not a good use of learning time. In fact, it's, it's a waste of time at school. And it's not something that you should be doing with the school Chromebook because it's not yours. You could certainly do that with your, your personal device at home if you wanna customize the desktop or the backgrounds or the wallpapers. All of that's is fine as long as mom and dad know what you're doing and it's okay with them. But at school, this isn't something that helps your learning, so you really shouldn't be doing it at school. And the kids really understood that once we talked about it in that light, in that context. Is it something that helps my learning? And clearly, while this might be fun, it doesn't help your learning in any way. So the second thing we've noticed kids doing, even as young as, as second grade and even some first graders, to be honest with you, is the, uh, kids changing their school account profile picture. And um, so we did a little screenshot here showing kids looking for different pictures to set as their profile. And again, we made a point of there's nothing bad on this screen. Yeah, there are no words that are inappropriate for school. There are no pictures here that are inappropriate for school. But again, is this something that will help your learning? And the answer is clearly no. It might be fun, but it's not a good use of learning time. And again, in fact, it's a waste of time. 
And so this isn't something that kids should be using their school Chromebooks for because it doesn't help their learning. Even if they're taking their school Chromebook home for virtual learning, or we know we have some kids taking their Chromebooks home to work on Lexia. So this was the very first thing that, that we talked to kids about. And it seemed to really help them understand what the, um, the purpose of their school Chromebooks are. Um, it's to it's to learn. It's not for playing around. You know, they could certainly do that on their home devices. Again, as long as it's okay with their family, that's something that families can decide together. The second question was a little bit easier. It's okay. Is if something is something that um, I want to do and I think it will help my learning. The second thing I should ask is: Is this something that's allowed by my teacher? And before we went into the examples, we asked kids to share with us um, some examples of things that are allowed by their teacher that help their learning. And kids, they could easily come up with a list. So kids talked about Lexia, which is um, an app uh, application and program that kids across the elementary schools are using to help them with their reading. And the, the cool thing about Lexia is it adjusts based on, on your reading ability. It automatically adjusts. And so as kids get better at things, it introduces them to more difficult things. And if they have trouble, it'll it'll go back and, and really remediate and work on those things that they need help with. So kids know that Lexia is something that helps their learning and is definitely allowed by their teacher. Freckle math was another one that kids came up with right away. And that's um, a math application that, again, all the elementary schools are using that kids use to practice and learn about math. Kids brought up um, Typing Club. The older kids starting in third grade, they start using Typing Club to get familiar with the keyboard. The purpose of it really isn't to teach them to touch type, because that takes, uh, as those of you know who can touch type, a lot of practice, but at least to get them familiar with the keyboard so it makes it easier for them to use it for writing. Um, using Google Docs to write, using a Google Slideshow to work on a presentation with friends, um, the younger kids using Seesaw to get an activity or assignment from their teacher, Google Classroom, going in there to get resources or links to things from their teacher. So all of those were examples that kids came up with really quickly about, yep, these things help my learning, and I know that it's allowed by my teacher. So then we moved on to some other examples, and we really had kids think about these, and it, it, it took some discussion and thought for them. Um, so the very first one was, we've noticed a lot of kids um, searching online for like cool free math games. And while a math game certainly could, if we think about that first question, it could help my learning. The second question is, is this something that's okay or allowed by my teacher? So the kids already know that Freckle Math is the application that they use for their um, math learning at school. Searching for cool free math games, um, they may find math games online that you know are not inappropriate, that have things that could help them with their learning, but it might not be taught the way that their teacher's teaching it. It might not use the same steps or the same set of skills that their teacher's doing. And also they may have advertisements, um, which are not necessarily always appropriate for kids. And so this was a really good example for kids to really think about, okay, yeah, I could I could make a case for it helps my learning, but th it, this isn't something that is allowed by my teacher. My teacher allows me and wants me to use Freckle Math. And so this was really helpful in our discussion with kids um, when we met with them. The, se the second example, and this was more older kids. Um, our older kids, we see sometimes they go onto YouTube and they search for things. And this was an example that I brought up because um, in this example, a student search for learn how to write an introductory paragraph. So again, it's nothing inappropriate that they're searching for. And it is something that could possibly help their learning. But we ask kids, do your teachers allow you just to open up YouTube and search for things? And all the students immediately knew, even though they weren't necessarily happy about it, um, no, that's not okay. That's not something that my teacher allows me to do. And we do know that some of the older kids have been searching for songs online and song lyrics and things. All of those things might be okay at home if your family um, allows it. And you know, certainly if they're being supervised for family on their personal devices, but it's not allowed at school. And so again, thinking, you know, kids thinking through those questions, this could help my learning, but it's, a not, it's not allowed by my teacher, so I shouldn't be doing it using my school Chromebook here at school. Um, the other thing that you should know is 
Prior to the pandemic, elementary students didn't have access to YouTube. The YouTube that they have access to on the school Chromebook is filtered. So it's not wide open like they would um, have access to at home, depending on how your setup is or um, how an adult would be able to access to YouTube. But um, once the pandemic hit and we moved to virtual learning, kids did need to have access to YouTube to be able to quickly access some of the learning videos that teachers needed to use then. But now that we're past that, um, if a teacher needs a student to see a specific video, they can share with them a specific video without kids needing to go directly to YouTube and search for it. And so we're looking as a district at, okay, now that the pandemic you know, is, is sort of in the rearview mirror and virtual learning might be used for snow days, but you know, we don't anticipate having to go back to virtual learning for large stretches of time. Do kids even need to be able to go to directly to YouTube in elementary schools? So as the district talks about that more, you know, we'll share more information with you. But this example really helped the kids understand that, no, nope, YouTube is not something that you're just going to go to at school, open up and start searching. That's not OK or allowed by the teacher. The third question was probably the most important one in our mind, because we also wanted kids to think about, OK, the work and the learning that I do on my school Chromebook, what I'm doing, even if I think it'll help my learning and it's allowed by my teacher, is this something that my mom, dad, grandma and grandpa, my family would want to see me doing or, or would they be proud of? So for example, a students might be, you know, writing something in a Google Doc, but it might not be their best work. And so we want them to think about, okay, you know, the time that you had, is this your best work that you're doing? Are you going back and looking at it and making revisions based upon, you know, suggestions or corrections by your teacher? The other thing is, and we know that, again, the older students have been doing this and we've been talking about it and uh, making sure that they understand, they could be in a Google Doc that's, you know, intended to help their learning. They're supposed to be writing about a specific, specific topic. It is something that's allowed by their teacher. But if they're just chatting with friends in a Google Doc, that's not necessarily something that their family would want to see or be proud to see. And so the examples I'm going to bring up, I made them purposefully kind of light and silly um, so the kids could you know, laugh a little bit. But giving them an the example of, you know, you really need to think about, is this something that my family would be proud of? So here's the first example. And I picked this example because I, I had been in fourth grade classrooms and I know a few weeks ago they were reading about and studying earthquakes. So here's a perfect example of, you know, the teacher gave an assignment for kids to work together on um, a writing assignment on earthquakes. And so here's a Google Doc that two kids are working on. And so, yes, this is something that could help their learning. Thinking about that first question. The second question, yes, this is something allowed by my teacher because this was assigned by my teacher. You know, they asked us to work together. They gave us a writing prompt to, you know, think about and write about earthquakes. But if you look on the lower right-hand side of this window, you'll see that these kids, um, they decided to comment in the document and they're chatting back and forth. And if you look in this particular comment, while there's nothing, you know, there's no bad words, there's no profanity, um, what they put in the comment definitely wasn't kind. And I made sure that it wasn't about a student. So I, I picked myself. And so I said, you know, the comments is talking about Mr. Barrett. And while it's a little silly, it's not something kind. And it's probably not something that their family would be proud to see. So again, that helped kids understand that, all right, answer to the first question is yes, this could help my learning. Yes, the second question, it's okay with my teacher because he or she asked me to do it. They, they assigned it to me. But what I'm doing while I'm doing this activity, what I'm actually doing is not something my family would be proud of or something that they would see or want to see. And so we talked um, about that and really had kids think about it. I also took this as an opportunity, particularly for the older kids, to show them an example of how anything that they do online, whether it's at school or at home, um, even if kids think that it goes away, that it really doesn't. And so one of the things that we've heard from older kids and some family is that kids are using things like Snapchat on their personal devices at home. And again, if families, if it's okay with you and you're supervising them, you approve it, that's not the school's um, concern. But we found out from kids that they use Snapchat besides because of the cool picture filters where they can make silly pictures um, because the messages automatically delete themselves after a while. 
So the kids thought that, well, no one could see what I wrote after it's deleted. So let me get out of this presentation quickly and show you um, what we showed the kids and how it's not true that things that you delete necessarily go away. And so I'm gonna bring up that Google Doc and there's some additional things in the comments because we've been working with this document. So um, the example we used was, all right, you know, there's a, a, a fourth or fifth grade student. Um, he and she were working on this document together. They were commenting back and forth and they see their teachers walking around and checking in and they think, okay, I'm gonna delete this before they come around and see my screen. It'll be gone. They'll never know I did it and I don't have to worry about it. But what I showed kids was that anybody who has access to this, so another student, a friend, um, even a teacher they shared it with, if they see it, they can quickly just take a snapshot, a screenshot of what they did. And then after the student deletes it and thinks, okay, it's gone. Now my teacher's coming in. He or she can't see it. I'm good. I don't have to worry about it. But what I showed the kids was, it's not gone. You know, I was able to take a screenshot of that. And in particular kids, um, you know, this might've been my friend on the day that we're doing it, but maybe my friend and I had an argument and now we're not friends anymore or we're mad at each other. And now my friend takes this and shares it with the teacher or shares it with other kids. And so we really wanted kids to understand that what you do online, it's really important to think about is this something my family would want to see and would be proud of me doing because things really don't go away online. Um, and so this, you could see the kids sort of their eyes open wide when I took the screenshot and deleted it. And then I was able to bring it up so quickly and sort of talk to them about, you know, what you do online, other people can see, and they could even just take a device and take a picture of it. They don't even have to take a screenshot and then it's not gone. It's something that that could come back and could be shared with other people, could even be edited to make it look worse than it was. So we really wanted the older kids in particular to sort of see that when you delete something online, it doesn't necessarily go away. And it certainly plays really well into also, is this something that I would want my family to see or be proud of? And then the, the last example, again, is something pretty silly, but um, you know, older kids given an assignment of working on a Google slideshow on a certain topic to present. And in this, in this scenario, you know, a, a student took a picture, right, of kids in their class and their teacher, and they put the picture into the slideshow and then other kids added some little comments and things like that. And again, um, even though this was a silly example, the comments in here, they don't have necessarily bad words or profanity and appropriate words, but it's not kind. It's not something that m most families would want to see that they did or would be proud of. So we really wanted kids to understand that again, yes, the Google slideshow, um, it is something that could help your learning, particularly if you're working with other friends to make a presentation about something you learned or to explain something you learned. Two, it's okay with your teacher because he or she would have assigned it to you, but how you're using it and what you're doing, if that's not something that your family would be proud of, then you probably shouldn't be doing it using your school Chromebook. And to be perfectly honest with you, they probably shouldn't be doing those things using their personal devices. So we really want kids to think about, is this something that um, they should be doing using their personal device if their family wouldn't be proud of it and wouldn't want to see it? So that's what we talked about with the kids. We also did a little activity with them. We had all of the kids clear away all of their backgrounds that they had set and all of their profile pictures. And we talked about, okay, now we're starting from scratch. And so all of the things that you, know, you may have searched or you may have gone on YouTube for or the silly profile pictures that you had put on you know, and all the time that you had spent searching for them, all of that's in the past, but moving forward, this is what we really expect kids to do. So we're gonna remind kids about these three questions. Is it something to help my learning? Is it something allowed by my teacher? And is it something that my family would want to see or be proud of? And so we're hoping that maybe some of these things would be helpful for you at home as well when you're talking to your kids about what they're doing online. And again, you know how kids use their personal devices at home that is something that is, is, is up to families. That's really not the school. Um, 
it's not our, our responsibility to really be involved in those things. However, some kids have been doing things using their personal devices online at home that have impacted the school day. Um, they've been bullying other students online. And so those things we do have to deal with at school. So maybe by talking with you know kids at home, thinking about, is this something that my family would be proud of? It also might help with those types of things. The last thing I want to quickly share with families is um, a lot of kids, particularly again, older kids, talk about how they have access to TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook and all these different things at home. And again, that's the family's decision if they do, um, or using iMessage to chat or lots of other things like Snapchat to chat. But you should be aware as families that um, all of the social media apps, legally you're supposed to be 13 years or older to have an account on those apps. Now it's really easy to fake birth dates and get around those things, but I wanted to make sure that families really understood that um, that is the law and that is the rule for those applications. And so you may want to have those conversations with, with your kids about um, if they're online and they didn't get your permission and they're not 13 and they're using TikTok, that's not something that, that they should be doing. Now, if they have your permission, that's something different. Um, but just be aware that that is something that a lot of kids aren't aware of and even some families aren't aware of that um, you really are supposed to be 13 years uh, or older to use social media apps. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to your, uh, your child's teacher. You can certainly reach out to me. We're gonna be reinforcing sort of these three questions with kids. You know, is it something that'll help my learning? Is it something that's allowed by my teacher? And is it something that my family would want to see or be proud of? And hopefully that'll really help kids understand that the Chromebooks at school are for learning and all of the other things, you know, they can do those at home with their family's permission. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.